imagine. If you will. A small suburban college in the middle of the Philadelphia suburbs. Surrounded by trees and only accessed by back roads. This is Cabrini College. And today, the students will be filming Location, a Loquitor News web edition. However, what the students don't realize is that today is different. And then when they start walking through these doors, they will be stepping into They will be stepping into They will be stepping into The location zone. Welcome to Location, a look with our news web edition delivering top stories from a top newspaper. I'm Diana Trasati. And I'm Jamie Santoro. Here's your news now. Ghosts, jack-o'-lanterns, and silly putty all were part of the WIBF scavenger hunt on Tuesday, October 27th. Let's take a look. The Cabrini Mansion was filled with ghosts and ghouls as many participated for a chance to win the WYBF 89.1 FM Spooky Scavenger Hunt. Well, this year is a spooky scav. Um, she, well, she actually, it's she really actually helped. A lot of people come out. We have to find... I think this year it's 74 different things on the list. You have an hour and a half to find them. And you have to come back first team with as much as possible items or whatever you have to find on the list wins. Two tickets to the Bates Hotel, which is really cool. It's a, a good prize. I mean, it's definitely worth trying and it's a lot of fun. I'm participating because I really want to win. And many students wanted to win as they all rushed back to the mansion to get their list checked with photo evidence. Despite not winning, many had a great time. Uh, I think it's just a great time for everyone to get together and start celebrating for this weekend. WIBF brought the holiday treats at this year's Spooky Scavenger Hunt. This is Jake Veterano on location. What's up all you stars and studs, I'm Jake Veterano. And I'm Gianna Chicatino, and welcome to The Dirt Sheet where we give you the latest in entertainment. Jake and I got this really cool video sent to us and we wanted to watch it here live first. Let's check it out. Whoa, that was so weird. Come on, Barbie, let's go. I think I'm getting a phone call in the middle of shooting. Feels like a cell phone number. Hello? That was weird. What, your ringtone? <sighs> no, it was some guy and he was like, seven days. Oh, well, he was probably just advertising the black and white formal on November 7th. You know you only have seven days left to buy tickets. Mm, I guess that makes sense. Hey, let's look at pictures from the ones that we're going to take now. Oh, I Okay. What? Whoa. Oh my God, Jake, what your is going nose is on? bleeding. Oh my God. Whoa, that's so weird. My nose wasn't bleeding a minute ago. Oh my God, this is so freaky. Well, anyways, Balloon Boy's mother admitted the whole situation was a hoax. Finally, they must be hightailing it. Look, there they go. Oh my God, there's a balloon. Well, that's all the time we have for you this week. I'm Deanna Chikatino. Gianna? Uh, I'm Jake Federer of the Glamazon. Gianna, you okay? Oh, watch the movie! For decades, the Woodcrest Estate on the campus of Cabrini College has been steeped in legend of ghostly haunts. Location crew members Joe Cahill and Chris Sarvati went on a mission to prove or disprove these stories. The night began with the use of a Ouija board by several members of WYBF staff. Ouija boards have been known to attract paranormal activity, as seen when the planchetta moves across the board. We began to descend into the basement and uncover the mysteries that lay deep within the heart of the Woodcrest Estate at Cabrini College. 
The basement showed signs of aging, weathered walls and graffiti all over. Some of which was less than pleasant to find. We were drawn to the dining room, and as we investigated, lights began to flicker on and off. Activity similar to what we experienced has been reported by WYBF's own general manager, Heather Fullerton, who not only experienced the flickering of lights, but also the movement of furniture wildly across the room. After review, we found no hard evidence. But we did have many personal paranormal experiences in the mansion. This is Chris Sarvati and Joe Cahill on location. Cabrini College named Sharon Kerrigan Lohman the new Vice President of Institutional Advancement. The goal of the Institutional Advancement Office at Cabrini is to build relationships and raise money for the college. The main thing that attracted Lohman to Cabrini was the college mission statement of Justice Matters. One message that Lohman hopes to get across to all students, alumni, and donors is that every gift counts. To promote a safe environment for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender students, the Office of Diversity Initiatives held another Safe Zone workshop to train faculty and staff on how to provide an environment that is safe for all. The Director of Student Diversity Initiatives, Melissa Waters, conducted this training on Friday, October 23rd in Grace Hall. The participants of the workshop learned how to accept and be better allies to LBGT students. Now see what's going on with Liz with the weather. Hi everyone, the weather that has been dominant throughout the area these past few days will trickle away for just a little bit. Taking a look at Thursday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 61 and a low of 49. Friday has mostly cloudy skies with a high of 64 and a low of 55. Saturday on Halloween there's going to be a few showers and it's going to get a little chilly so bundle up before you go out. The high is going to be around 64 and the low of 54. And to end your weekend, partly cloudy skies with a high of 60 and a low of 45. That's all I have for you today. Back to you Jamie and Diana. And now let's take a trip around the world. Healthcare reform has been a controversial issue recently sweeping the media. Many government figures have been proposing their own plans. The Senate recently announced its plan, which would include a government health care option. States, however, would have the option of opting out of this government plan. President Obama declared the infamous H1N1 virus as a national emergency. To date, the virus has reached 46 states and has killed about 1,000 Americans. While 85 million doses of the vaccination will be shipped to the U.S., there are still local shortages of it. Now let's check in with Nick for your sports update. What's going on all you sports fans? Nick Goulden here with your two-minute drill. The men's soccer team defeated Gwen at Mercy College with a score of 2-0. Goalie Brian Johnson notched six saves in this game and added another shutout to his season. He now has five shutouts this season. The women's field hockey team beat Gwen at Mercy College with a score of 3-1. Sophomore midfielder Maura Gordon achieved her third hat-trick of the season. On Saturday, October 24th, the women's volleyball team played Immaculata University and came out with yet another 3-0 win. They played again Tuesday against Mary Wood, winning 3-0, as well to make that eight wins in a row. The Phillies are headed to the World Series. They came out red hot on October 21st in what turned out to be the final game of the series against the Dodgers. Jason Worth hit two home runs, and the Phils enjoyed a 10-4 victory over the Dodgers to send them home for good. Ryan Howard was recognized as the series MVP. Finally, the Eagles played against the Washington Redskins on Monday night. The Birds won with a score of 27-17. Deshaun Jackson scored the two big touchdowns. The Birds now stand at 4-2. That's all for your two-minute drill this week. Tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks for tuning in to this week's location. Be sure to watch next week for another great episode. I'm Jamie Santoro. And I'm Diana Trasati. This week's web edition is brought to you by Habitat for Humanity's Halloween Bake Sale. 
We are trying to do a bigger event to make Habitat more prominent, especially on uh, college campuses. So we are trying to get Villanova and Eastern and Cabrini's Habitat for Humanities to join together to do a run walk down the main line through all three campuses. This would be like one of our major projects and all the proceeds from our bake sales and all of our fundraisers on campus will go towards that cause.